We give you praise. Let's be seated in God's presence. Let's be seated. Hallelujah. Alrighty. Um, how many people were excited coming here today? Praise God. Um, and there's just going to be more and more of that. There's going to be more and more of that divine excitement because, you know, there are times wherein, like the Bible says, what man knows the things of a man save the spirit of the man. Now, for those people who were not born again until yesterday and may not have read the old King James English, what that scripture says is this. The things that have yet to come to settle within your consciousness, things that you're not consciously aware of, your spirit is aware of. So the Bible says, what part of a man knows the things of a man? It is not your emotions. It is not your intellect. It is your spirit that knows. I mean, you know sometimes when you think your emotions are very certain about a particular person, how you love them, how you miss them, don't you soon realize after a while that definitely all of that was the, dece the deceptiveness of your own heart. Because the Bible says that the heart of man is deceitful and desperately wicked. There are people that God said to you to live alone, but your emotions kept saying you need to pursue them. And look at those years wasted chasing people that God is trying to chase away from you. And that is the reason why your spirit is all you can depend on because your spirit is an extension of God and that is the part of you that gets to overcome. The Bible says whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. The flesh doesn't overcome the world. No matter how moral you are in your consciousness, you just haven't faced the right kind of temptation. When the right kind of temptation comes along, it exposes how frail the morality of man can be. No matter how conscious you are intellectually about what God is saying to you and the world that you're in if it is still just in your head let me tell you something you are no match for the deceiver you see because when you're talking about intellects you are but a man and you're wrestling against principalities and powers and the spiritual uh, and the rulers of the darkness of this world who have been around they have seen many iterations of the existence that you have so we cannot rely on our intellects we cannot rely on our emotions. You know, the Bible says there is a way that seems right to a man. The word seem is the same root word to be conscious or to be aware of. So in your consciousness, it seems right. But the Bible says the end thereof is destruction. And so all of that to say that you may not even know why you're excited coming here, but your spirit is speaking up on what things God is doing. And so if you were one of those people, can I just see if you were excited coming here? And you know that, praise the Lord, that it wasn't just emotional excitement. Because it wasn't because, oh, you're going to see Laura today and she's going to bring flowers. <laughs> it's not because you're thinking, Manuelita might bake that German cake all over again. <laughs> you see what I mean? Or maybe you suddenly realize that, wait a minute, it's November. And Chris's birthday is this month. Yes. <laughs> if it was one of those things that you just know deep within your heart that God has something for you. I am glad to announce to you that what God has for you is help. Praise the Lord. God has help for us. If we get to it today, I want to get into some of the things that we need to be praying about. About seven things that we should be praying about in these last days. But one of them that I want to immediately share that I believe is the reason for some of the unspoken excitement and joy that we feel in our hearts is God is sending us help. Because we need that help. Because every time we need to leave where we have always been to go to where we need to be, it's usually a struggle. Because the human being is very averse to the risk of discovering the new. We would rather stay where we're at. We would rather stay with the things that we have known. No matter how horrible it is, we, we, this is what we know. People say, the devil you know. You know all those lies that we have been fed? That the devil you know is better than the angel that you do not know. Let me tell you something. I would rather an angel that hasn't even been created than the devil that I know. Because what can the devil give you? The Bible says every good gift and every perfect gift comes from the father of light with whom there is no variableness. 
no shadow of turning. There is no darkness with him. And so why would you stay with that which you know? Especially when God is saying it is time to move on. Look all through scripture. Almost every time God says to somebody to move, they don't move until it becomes uncomfortable. And that is where God sends help. You know, we read the story of Abraham, how God called him out of his father's house and his kindred in the shorter version that you've got in, the, in Genesis. And everyone is like, oh my God, that guy is so obedient. God said it and he did it. But when you read Jewish history and you read an elaboration of what he went through, he was happy when God says, let us go because his life was hell where he was at. His own father had declared him a fugitive and they were supposed to shoot him on sight because he had become such an enemy of, of the state. You started the life of Abraham and you recognize that after having pushed down the idols of his father, he pushed all of them down and their faces were to the ground. And he told on his own self. And they were like, oh, you did it. He had to run for his life. But God intended for him not to remain with those people, but he stayed there until it became uncomfortable. Many of us, where we are today, if we don't experience a little nudge by the Lord, through the ministry of his angels, you will not leave Egypt. You will continue to embrace the columns of Assyria and you will make yourself the chieftains of the markets of Samaria. But the Lord is saying, I want you to come out and be humble at the foot of Sinai because I am coming to visit you. But you need to leave where you're at. Remember that the ones that the Lord is coming for, for are the ones who have chosen to go outside of Egypt to the brooks thereof to drink and that is where the restorer will find them. So why are you excited? Why do I believe that your spirit is so ignited to be here tonight? Because the Lord says, I am sending help to those who are finding it difficult to move in the direction of my leading. So not only are we going to hear it today, but we will receive it today. In the place of prayer, every one of us we will pray today and say, God, I, and I know that in some ways that I'm not even aware of, I have been resisting your leading. And now I am ready for help. Let me remind you the story of Lot. This was the image that the Lord gave to me today. Even though Lot knew, what are the things we've been talking about? We've been talking about the fact that we need to intercede for our brothers and sisters who are still under the deception of Satan, who are still in the world, who are still holding on to the world, particularly those people who say to you every day, oh, I can't wait for COVID to be over. I want us to go back to the normal. Every one of those people telling you they want to go back to the normal, just delete the word normal. And what are they saying? They want to go back. We are not going back because that madness ain't normal. There was nothing normal about that. The, the spate of, of sleepiness and drunkenness that believers were in prior to COVID, why not going back there? Do you know how many people did not even realize that before COVID they went to church just because that boy went to church? Do you know how many people did not even know that they went to church because they had always religiously gone to church? And the moment there was a little bit of an opposition, a little bit of a, of a, not even a real ordinance, but some fake news telling us that we cannot meet and they forbid us from meeting. People are like, yeah, that's what I thought. That meeting is not supposed to be. What do you think? Yeah, and they asked the same unbelievers who are around them, what, what do you think? The governor says that we may not be safe going out. Let me tell you something. That was maybe, I don't know, maybe 90% of, of, of Christians went to church without even thinking about why they went to church. If somebody said to you that a lion can meet you on the way and devour you if you went to church, would you still go to, to church? Anywhere that you want to go to, that you're not ready to remain at, do not go. And what I'm saying is this, many of us only went because it was convenient. But if you knew that this is a one way, if I go this way, I cannot come back. Is it worth your while? If it is worth your while and you take the risk to go there, then that means you are convinced that you need to go. But that particular point in time, it is not accidental. And so we've seen it. So why do we want to go back to the time wherein everybody, almost everybody showed up just because it was convenient? We're not supposed to do the things of God because they are convenient. Jesus went up to the mountain to pray in the early hours of the morning when it was cold and dark and he went there to pray. Where was convenience? Convenience was on the boat where Peter, James and John were snoring their heads off. That was convenience. When Jesus was walking on the water and the storms were blowing 
And everybody was afraid. They thought it was Halloween. They said, wow, it's a ghost. It's a ghost. Peter was like, if it is you, bid me to come. And the Lord says, come. And he went. Now, let me tell you something. If the Lord is saying for you to do it, no matter what is standing between you and the, obe- and the place the Lord is asking you to go to, you should go anyway. If the Lord is asking you to go. And so, I'm not going back to that no more. God forbid that we go back to that no more. And we will not go back to that no more because time doesn't go back on itself. It may take a full circle to come back to where it was, but it's not just going to immediately turn back. And so say to those people who say to you, we want to go back to the new normal. I'm adding you to the list of people I'm interceding for. Yeah, I am. Oh yeah, because we tell people when we invite them to birthday parties that you're on my list, you're coming. So why can't you tell them you, they are on your list of people you are interceding for? Let them know because some people would not wake up until they know that their matter needs intercession. Because some people feel like they are just fine where they're at. Let me tell you something one day, true story. I was feeling good about my life until I heard what my mother was praying for. And I had to listen. I was like, is that me? Because I thought I was doing just well. But when I heard the kind of prayer she was saying, and now she was asking for the redemption of my backsliding, that was when I started to think to myself that, wait a minute, I was there when this woman got born again. We showed her how to the difference between Matthew and Mark. And now she's interceding for me to come back to life. Maybe it's time for me to wake up. It's good to intercede for people and we've been talking about that but interceding for people is not all that they need. People also need what? Help. If intercession is alright and if, if intercession is alright but if it is all what we need then Jesus would not have bothered sending the Holy Spirit. Because he says I am going and I forever live to intercede for you. And Jesus' intercession is not just prayer. Jesus is praying and fasting for you. You know, that's why I tell people, you need to fast. If Jesus is fasting, who the heck are you? Jesus is currently on a fast. Because when he was living, he says, I will no longer drink of the fruit of the vine until I have received you into the kingdom. He decided to fast that for your sake. And he's interceding for you so that you can learn from his example and do the same for others. But that is not enough because on top of that, he says, ask the Father. And he will send the Holy Spirit, the helper. <coughs> Can we find examples of people in the Bible that were prayed for, that were interceded for, who still needed help? Lot. Abraham interceded for Lot. Yeah. Abraham sought the Lord and tried to negotiate with the Lord in the place of intercession. And still, Lot needed help. The intercession of Abraham did not get Lot out of Sodom and Gomorrah. It staved off the hand of God. But it did not completely cancel the judgment of God. The judgment of God is what it is. And that's what I tell people. Stop praying for the world. Because it's like praying for Sodom and Gomorrah. God is not listening because he's already decided I will destroy them. Yes. You understand what I mean? But Abraham was praying for Sodom and Gomorrah and God wanted him to see so that we can see even more clearly the futility of praying for a world that is resting under the hammer of God's judgment. That judgment hammer is coming down and there's nothing anybody can do about it. So Jesus said, and we should say, I do not pray for the world, but I pray for these ones that you have given to me. And when Abraham saw the futility of global intercession, of a Catholic prayer, Things were switched around and he started to be more concerned about his... What is the relationship between them again? No, no, no. So Abraham's older brother was the one that gave birth to Lot. Yeah, so Lot is his nephew. Oh, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I had to, I had to remind myself of that. Yeah. Abraham was interceding and nothing came out of it, so to speak. Because God already knew. I mean, God did not just proclaim judgment over Sodom and Gomorrah because he had nothing to do. He knew that the time had come for them to be done away with. And this particular dispensation, the church that will be around at the generation of the end is the church of the last days. And that is the church that would be faced with another Sodom. 
Because the Bible says that the system of the world that will be at the time of his, re of his return is going to be that mystery Babylon that is called what? Sodom and Egypt. And I've explained over the, over the years that it was called Egypt because of its regimentation. It was called Sodom because of its immorality. This government and this administration, global administration that we have today is very organized, very regimented, very calculated, but then at the same time very immoral. Imagine if all of that regimentation and the, the, the ability to drive an agenda, imagine if it was applied to moving the lives of people forward. Look at the rate at which they're driving everything. There is, no, there is no legislation that is allowed to sit on the table anymore. Everything gets approved very quickly. You want to manufacture something? We approve it very quickly. And the, now, why, where was all that quickly, quickly before? You understand what I mean? But let me tell you something. The Bible says, and this was David speaking to his son Solomon. He says, my son, when sinners entice you, do not consent. He says, because their feet are swift at shedding blood. They're very quick when it comes to doing evil. The only time you see the system of the world moving very quickly is when they are in a haste to shed blood. But speed and regimentation happens to be the order of ancient Egypt. They were one of the very first people to figure out ways to accelerate a chariot to match the speed of the horse. And let me tell you something. These things are going on in the world today. All kinds of manipulation and sorcery just to shed blood. And what do we see in the midst of all of that? We also see Sodom. There is so much immorality in the world today. And they are actually advocating for immor immorality all the time. All day long. In fact, equipping children to be immoral. You understand what I mean? So let me say this. We have come to that end. We're not praying for Sodom and Gomorrah. We are interceding for Lot. And those people that we have been interceding for, they need more, more than intercession. And that's what the Lord would have me say to you today. The Lord knows exactly what else you need, which was what Lot needed. And what was it? A helping hand or two. Because with all that intercession, the Bible says Lot refused to leave his ranch in Sodom. He was still there. Right within the cusp of Sodom and Gomorrah, where he had pitched his tent and, and had his children and settled his family life, the normal that he had always known. He wasn't ready to let go of the normal, even though that normal was an abomination before the Lord. He wasn't ready to let go. And what did the Bible say? The Bible says that the angels of the Lord had to hold him by the hand and they pulled him out of Sodom. And the Lord is saying, tell, my, tell your brothers and sisters, that I am sending my angels to pull them by the hand. And so, I don't know about you, but I find that so comforting. Because there, there are areas that God's been speaking to me. God's been speaking to me in some areas of my life, and I know it is God. But man, I have to stop doing this? Come on, God. Yeah, I have to start doing that? Oh, come on, God. But God is saying, I don't have time. Neither do you. So I'm going to make them pull you by the hand. Isn't that a good God? Because if he hadn't dragged Lot out of Sodom, Lot would have perished with Sodom and Gomorrah. And so help is here, folks. I have seen the release of angels to come and grab us by the hand. So help is here. So when you find yourself suddenly doing things that you never used to be able to do before, don't start giving yourself the credit. Oh yeah, don't start giving yourself the credit. There is somebody in this church, I'm not going to mention her name. When you ask her to do something and she does it, she wants to take credit for it. Whereas I said you should do it. She's like, oh, no pastor, I did it. So I need the credit. So when you find yourself and you begin to do those things with ease, do not take that honor unto yourself. Give glory to God. Amen. Say, God, for seven years you've been telling me to do this, and now I find myself doing this. Doing it. Remember this last 13-day fast that we did? For most of us, it was perhaps the easiest fast that we had ever been on. At least the people who truly fasted. You see what I mean? And I said it. I told my wife, I said, look, I said, I mean, it's like we should just keep going. And then I heard the angel of the Lord saying, be careful what you wish for. I said, well, I didn't mean we want to keep going. I'm just saying it feels like it you see what I mean but it's become a lot easier 
Two weeks ago, I said many things that we struggled with are a lot easier. Now, studying the word of God is easier. Praying is easier. And if you're not finding it easy just yet, don't worry. It's your turn now to get help because the angels are beginning to pull by the hand. And so let us get up very quickly and pray. And as a way of receiving that blessing into our lives, I want you to say, look, here are my hands. Are my hands. Angels, of the Lord, Angels of the Lord. Pull me in the direction, me in the direction of, the of the instructions of the Lord for my life. For my life. As much as I may like where I'm at, I know it's time to move on. I know it's time but I need help. But I need help. My, emotions My emotions weigh me down. My taste weighs me down. But I need you to pull me up and get me out of here that I may do the will of my Father in heaven. In Jesus' name. And I just want you to, for a moment, repent from sluggishness. Repent from delayed obedience. Let your repent begin with a confession. Even though confession is not repentance, repentance begins with a confession. And say, now I will not do what I used to do. Now I will not do what I used to. That was, I will not do what I used to do. I will not do what I used to do. That was not pleasing to God. That was not pleasing to God. Now I will please my Father. Now I will please my Father. When it calls, I will answer. Where he leads, I will go. Father, we thank you. Because it's a new day. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's be seated. Praise the Lord. You know, like I said, we're going to pray for... I want to talk about a couple of things that we need to pray for. The other one is in Genesis chapter 47. We're going to read from verse 12. Now, the reason why it is important for us to know that help is on the way is because, number one, like I said... We should not take the credit for the things that are about to begin to happen in our lives. Because it is the angel of the Lord that is pulling us by the hand. And it should also be an indicator to you of the shortness of the time. Because if once it gets to the point wherein God can no longer wait. And he sends his angels to pull you by the hand. Then you know that the destruction of that system that is abominable to God is near. And you must not be caught in it. Right? You must not be caught in it. In fact, recently, I be, it was Alan who had a vision. Was it a vision of a dream? I don't know. Of a storm that is coming. And the word of the Lord says, do not be caught in that storm. You see? And so many of us need to start to do things differently. This is the season that we're at. If you're not receiving clear instructions just yet of the things that you need to remove from you and remove yourself from, go ask the Lord and say, Lord, for you to be doing it, means you have spoken to me about it, but I may not have paid attention. I'm sorry. Now, please, fill me afresh with the passion and the zest to do your will. The reason why I know God has already spoken to you is this. He says, will I do a thing without revealing it to my servants, the prophets? And so God has revealed to you whether somebody who spoke prophetically over you or maybe even you received it prophetically, God will not leave his children in the dark. There was not a single soul in the Exodus who woke up one day and everybody was packing their things and was like, oh my God, what's going on? I'll pack mine too. You know what? The, you didn't get the memo? We're going out to Sinai. There was nobody. Everybody knew. All of Jesus' disciples knew. Even though they didn't want to accept that he was going to cross to the cross. Everybody knew. In fact, the whole town knew because he had that triumph, that triumph and entry into Jerusalem and it had been prophesied by Zechariah that when the time comes that it will march gloriously into Jerusalem through the company of a people who are his people to whom he came who did not know that it was him but it was just because they didn't open their hearts God made it very clear let me tell you something we are so close Pastor Will shared a video with me the other day not even the other day just yesterday yeah, it's okay to say yesterday if you don't, uh, some, but you know when you've sat on that some pastors for too long, they want to make everything sound very holy. Also, the other day, the Lord spoke to me. It was just yesterday. Okay. No ceremony about it. It was just yesterday, Bill said to me, he said, you need to watch the video that I sent you. I said, oh, I'll be so busy. He said, okay, watch it now. And then he showed me on his phone. Because he knows me sometimes when I say that I will watch it. It means I'm not watching it. And so he showed it to me. 
And we need to play that video. Maybe on Sunday we can be more organized and play that video. But do you know it's a video that shows the image of the beast that has been given a voice to speak. And those are one of the very last things that would happen before we see the revealing of the man of sin and the mark of the beast. Will, can you shoot that video from your phone to the screen behind me? If you can, if it's too difficult, don't worry about it. Oh, yeah. But then if you can, if you can mirror it, I can, just, I can just describe it. I can probably describe it better than they acted it. There was a meeting of the United Nations. There was a meeting of the United Nations, and they made the image of a dinosaur, essentially a dragon, to come and speak. And when I'm talking about the image, it wasn't just a photograph. It was an actual three-dimensional being that walked into the room. And everybody was astonished. They had their mouths open wide and this beast spoke. What are the signs of the very last days? The apostle John, while he was on the island of Patmos, the Lord revealed to him that the beast, the Antichrist, will create the image of the beast and give it a voice to speak as a man, and the people will be astonished. You've read that in your Bible. And it is happening today. Because the image of the beast is the image of the dragon. And this dragon, they call him a dinosaur. But have you ever seen a dragon? That's what I thought. Yeah. It is not too different from what they present to you as a trinoceros, or whatever they call them. They keep giving them all these made-up names. But then at the end of the day, the moment I saw that, I said to Will, I said, that is the image of the beast and he, it speaks as a man. And everybody in the room, their mouths were open wide. Even the ones who had masks, you could tell that their mouths were open behind the mask. <laughs> because I have the in of spirit, I can tell that their mouths were open behind the mask. Their eyes were like that. You see what I mean? So that's, I think that's, I can, yeah, that's the video. It looks like it. But in any case, maybe we'll watch it properly on Sunday. But if you haven't seen it, I want you to go and watch it. Because many people are still waiting for the signs of the end time in order to begin to take seriously the times that we are in. My mom called me on Sunday. She was like, I heard the message that you were preaching. She said, I was praying for you because she's like, now you're actually calling people's names. And I said, yeah, but why should I have any regard for them at the expense of the word of God? If the Lord is saying, speak the truth. What do I do? I speak the truth. The Lord says, you shall not be afraid of their faces. When the men were having a meeting on, on, on Monday, what was the word that the Lord gave to us from the book of Ezekiel? The Lord says, I have made your face harder than a flint. A flint is another word for diamond. The diamond is the hardest natural known substance in the world. The Lord is saying, I have made your face harder than a flint. You don't have to let anybody intimidate you. We can't be afraid. We need to speak the truth because if we don't speak it now, what if there is no tomorrow? You're saving all the truth for tomorrow. You see what I mean? Okay, which one of them is it? Alrighty, can we have... Why don't you pause? Why don't you pause? I want you, I want you all to look at some things when you go to look at it on your own. They flashed the name United Nations three times. And there's a reason why they did that because there are three that bear witness on the earth and three that bear witness in heaven. When you watch these things, don't just watch these things as, oh, the United Nations is, is an organization that is there to help. Why is this man trying to make everything bad? You want to just care us about everything. <laughs> Let me tell you something. The reason why you're saying that is because people did not scare you enough. So you're welcome. You understand what I mean? Now let me say this. It was not a coincidence. As soon as I saw it, I told Will. They showed it the first time. I said they will show it two more times. They showed it one more time. I told Will. I said one more time. And they showed it again. Simply because many of us don't even know the, the, the spiritual force behind that organization. And the reason why they're called the UN. The UN is what? Is uh. And uh means one. One world. 
You see what I mean? And that was something God said at the beginning. He says, I'm not going to allow that. He said, because if these people remain one, there is nothing they set their hearts to do that they will not be able to accomplish. That is the reason why we are only allowed to be one if we are one in Christ. If we are one outside of Christ, it is destructive. In case you haven't thought about it, let me give you a scenario. If the United Nation goes ahead to fulfill their agenda, their 17-piece agenda that they drew up, I think in 2017 when they celebrated the, was it how many years, 70, 70 years or whatever years to celebrate it, if they should fulfill all of what is in that agenda, you will not be able to own anything in your name and you cannot practice a religion that is not approved by the state. And the only religion that they have approved is a religion that is based on the morality of the individuality of man. Which means everybody should be allowed to do whatever it is that they want to do. And that is the new religion. And in case you're wondering who are the people behind this, the Vatican is behind this and they have made their publication. What I'm telling you is public information. Brother Bryson updated me today that between yesterday and today, they, they, they started the meeting yesterday also. Yeah, all the, the prominent leaders in the world have met with the Pope, and what they're pushing is the Pope's agenda for one world religion, yeah. one world government. These are the things that I've been prophesied about. And you see how the devil will work through people that you and I have grown to trust, that we have always learned to love and to celebrate. But at some point, we need to recognize what is really going on. You see, because many people are still so in love with Sodom that they're not calling out what is going on. Because they're like, man, we can't say that. You can't mention that. You can't say that about the Pope. You can't say that about the Vatican. You can't say that, that about that TV evangelist. On Sunday, while we were here, what did I tell you? I mentioned Justin Bieber. The other person that I didn't mention that I described enough. Now, let me say this. One of the things that I do know is no matter how vocal and how transparent we get, we cannot forget the language that we speak as prophets. And the prophetic language is such that you need to allow the other person to use their discernment. When you study prophecy, every single one of them had this element of not telling you all of what they're singing and they will say things like let him who has the spirit of understanding let him know what is being said let him who has a heart let him receive that which is being said simply because God does not expect the spirit of prophecy to just drug you with information you need to engage it by curiosity for the Bible says he knows who thirsts to know Jesus says blessed are those who hunger and thirst for they shall be filled. And so sometimes I say stuff and I don't say everything because I want you to engage otherwise nothing will stick. So I mentioned Justin but I didn't mention Kanye but I described him. I said some people have received I mean they have attained a particular height in the world and they claim to be born again but you don't see any fruit of repentance. They claim to be born again while they are still at level. So let's say the world has 35 levels and they are at level 33 which means they're very close to the top if you know what I mean don't you be thinking too much about that number okay and this person is at level 33 in the world and they get born again and they want to automatically transition to level 33 in Christ you who have been in the world and dining with Satan suddenly you say you're born again and next week you're preaching to tens of thousands of people and going from one church, one mega church, to another mega church. Now, wait a minute. Who are you like in the Bible? Apostle Paul was sitting in front in synagogues everywhere that he went to. He didn't have to make an appointment to see the high priest. He was in and out of the White House. That was Apostle Paul. But when he got born again, he went from that height in the world... He had to come down so that he can start again because you have to be born again. And nobody is born again and they come out of their mother's womb. And they're like, man, woman, good job, good job, good job. Stay here, recover, I need to go shopping. No, we are born as babies and we have to grow. But you see some people that claim to be born again and they were born again yesterday and today they're already 40 years old in the spirit. And you're like, wait a minute, are you really born again? Apostle Paul had to go to Arabia. I said that on Sunday. For three years, he, he chose obscurity. He gave up his celebrity. 
He said, you cannot take all of what Satan has given to you and use it to serve God because God does not need Satan's tools to fulfill his own agenda. He wants you to put off the armor of Saul and come afresh. Do you know that while I was yet saying that, the same time that I was saying that, the same Kanye West and Justin Bieber were leading worship at a service where the third man that was standing there is the high priest of the church of Satan. A, a, a well-known Luciferian, a, a self-acclaimed Satanist, and he's not just a Satanist, he's a high priest in the courts of Satan, he was standing there, and when they said it was time to pray, what were they doing? They were chanting and murmuring words that nobody else heard. And they were dressed in all white because the Bible says that the messengers of Satan will come disguised as angels of light. Every one of those things was symbolic. And the Lord said to me, he says, look at their feet. And every single one of them was wearing Wellington boots. They were wearing rain boots. And the Lord said to me, he said, because they are standing in filth and they know it. When God called Moses, he said to him, take off your sandals. You don't even need that here. For the place upon which you stand is a holy ground. He said, but look at them. He says, they are wearing Wellington boots. He said, because they know that they are standing in filth. If they didn't do that as a ritual, why did they do it? If they didn't do that as a ritual, you would have seen that their garments are drenched in mud. I was still saying here on Sunday, about the same time that I was saying it, that service was going on. It wasn't until in the evening, people started bombarding me with messages. Look at what you were just saying today. Boom. Look at what you were just saying. Instagram, Facebook, Instagram, Facebook. You see what I mean? Let me tell you something. We cannot let them abuse the name of God publicly while we are trying to speak the truth privately. Goliath despised the name of God publicly. And when the Bible says David came, David said, the Bible says, and the people of the army of the children of Israel were murmuring amongst one another to see if anyone would defend the glory of their God. They were murmuring, they were speaking quietly. But David did not speak quietly. He went across the battle line, or he went toward the battle line, and he yelled on top of his voice. How dare you uncircumcised Philistine despise and defy the name of the God of the armies of Israel. He says, I will slaughter you today and feed your body to the birds. And he did it. So the question is, who are you going to be afraid of? God or man? The Bible says that the fear of man brings only a sneer. When I said it, it wasn't because I had just traveled in time and seen what happened. It was because the Lord was letting me know what's going on. That was not part of what had occurred to me in my heart to speak on Sunday. But as I got here, the Lord showed it to me. Now look at all of what Justin Bieber had been doing in the months leading to that abomination of desolation. What had he been doing? He had been having fellowship with believers or with Christians who were not standing properly. He's been encouraging them by mingling with them and singing and leading worship with them. Many people were sharing that on Facebook the other day. That was Justin Bieber leads worship. And I'm like, no. He's leading your brothers and sisters further and further away from their place of assignment. It was an infiltration. Now, don't get me wrong. Like I said on Sunday, some of these people are like Simon the sorcerer. Even they themselves are deceived by Satan to the point wherein they think they believe. We read in Acts chapter 9. Is it Acts chapter 8 or 9? When the Bible says, and Simon believed. He wasn't just one of the people who believed. The Bible says Simon, having believed, became a follower or a disciple of Philip. Because he believed. But because he had not allowed himself to be genuinely born again, he did not let go of the old nature. The Bible says, having been an astonisher of people in the regions of Samaria, he sought the power of the Holy Spirit by wanting to pay for it, simply because he didn't want to stop being an astonisher. An astonisher is a, is a celebrity. Somebody has, who has regard. The Bible describes his celebrity that by means of sorcery, he became an astonisher in the regions of Samaria. And not only that, he had regard between the mighty and the little. So it was not just celebrated by little teenagers who, are, who don't know what they're doing. Like I said on Sunday, he was celebrated by kings as well. Some of these celebrities are welcome into the palaces of our kings. From the White House to whatever other house there is. 
You see what I mean? And those things were described, even though he claimed to have believed, he did not take the path of righteousness. The path of righteousness is to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, to bear the fruits of repentance, is to be ready to count every one of your accomplishments as done. If you have accomplished it by means of sorcery, walk away from it and give the proceeds to the poor. Even the things that we attained by good works before we come to know the Lord, like the man who was the rich young ruler, who had kept all the law from his youth, all of what he attained, Jesus says you need to sell it and give it to the poor. Not because Jesus wanted to give him a task that was an uphill battle just, but it was because Jesus knew that the rich man's wealth is the ransom for his soul. And if I'm asking you to follow me and something else can pull you away from me, don't waste your time. You need to do like Apostle Paul. You need to count it all. Apostle Paul says, I count it all as dung. As rubbish. If you are truly born again, you must be ready to walk away from it. Now let me tell you something. The Lord said to me that many people who are, cel- who are celebrities, who are politicians, who are people of renown, he said, I have spoken to them myself. I have called them and asked them to follow me. He says, but they can't walk away from the wealth, neither are they willing to carry their cross. He said, because they know what's going to happen. The world will turn against them and file all kinds of lawsuits and charge them with all kinds of of, of, of offenses that they did not come in. The world is going to make them look bad because the moment you stop using what Satan gave to you for Satan, he will come after you. And the Lord said to me, he says they're afraid of their names being tarnished. He says they would rather have their names preserved and mine tarnished than be willing to let their names be tarnished so that mine can be glorified. Do you know how Jesus' name was tarnished? Jesus, who was respected as the rabbi, as the teacher, as the miracle worker, as the healer, as the compassionate one, he suddenly became a thief. The Bible says he was numbered with the transgressors. And he didn't even defend himself. He was willing for his robe to be taken. The only thing that really made anybody know that it was somebody important physically, they took the robe away from him and he didn't fight for it. He stood before uh, Pontius Pilate. He stood before What's his name? The, um, the high priest, Caiaphas. And they laid all kinds of accusations against him, but he kept his cool simply because he would rather have his own image tarnished so that the Father can be glorified. Let us not be as children who are asleep, who are ignorant of the devices of Satan. Let us stop letting Satan take advantage of us by presenting the liberties that our hearts have idolized to lead us away from the Lord. Let nobody take a throne or have a throne in your heart. It don't matter how much of a celebrity you are. Some of these people are genuinely and truly gifted by God. I'm wearing shoes that are designed by Kanye West. But then at the same time, I'm not going to because of any sentiment, not speak the truth. We're going to get back to that video in just a minute, but I just want to say this, ladies and gentlemen. Just on Sunday, you saw what happened. And what does that mean? (laughs) We should be giving thanks to God. Because right now we are without excuse. At least now you cannot know that the devil is trying to unite the world in one religion. Wherein you have so-called born again Christian and worship leader and the priest of Satan standing together. The Bible says what connection... Where is that scripture again you were quoting in on the call? Is it 1 Corinthians? The Bible says what connection has light to do with darkness what connection has light got to do with darkness the angel said why seek ye the living among the dead you cannot sit on the fence ladies and gentlemen it's either you are for us or you are against us it is either you are for God or you are not you can't I was saying it on Sunday you can't lead worship Saturday night Uh, and Sunday morning but then Friday what are you doing? In fact, I saw lots of foolishness this, this weekend because there were pastors who were celebrating Halloween. Yes. And I'm thinking to myself, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Dressed in all. In fact, one of the families that my wife showed to me, a family, the pastor and his family, they dressed like skeletons. And I'm like, oh, this really helps because at least from a distance, you know they are the dead. You understand what I mean? Now, let me say this. Let me say this. Can you please just keep it down a little bit? Let me say this. 
We are not being judgmental. Neither are we being cynical. The times that we have come to no longer permits for us to be sheepish or to be shy with our message. We can no longer be conservative about the message of the gospel simply because we are at war. Before we go to war, we can have a dialogue. We can slip you a paper under the table because we don't want to call you out. But right, let me tell you what would happen. If you see somebody who is 200 feet from a ditch, you can say, excuse me, ma'am, ma'am, excuse me. Just take it easy. There's a ditch ahead. And you can get close to them and whisper. But when they are just two feet away from falling into a ditch, what do you, Michelle, you shout their names. You push them out on the way. Be rough. Do whatever you do. Apostle Paul said, we will do whatever. He said, even though it is us snatching you from the fire, we will. And this is what we're doing, snatching people from the fire. We have children that have idolized these people that Satan is using as pawns to deceive the world. If they don't hear it coming from us, how would they know the truth? The Bible says, how would they know unless we tell them? And I am glad. What did I tell you three weeks ago? Or about three weeks ago? Bryson, remember that I said, very soon, I'm not just going to mention the names of organizations. But I will mention the names of people and it will be okay to say so because the things that I'm saying will be made public. I was saying it on Sunday. Watch out for these people. And it was already made public. By the time we finished service, all of our news feeds were going... Yeah, ding, ding, ding. Yeah. My news feed and my inbox was, was put on blast. And I'm glad because the word of the Lord is being fulfilled. My mom said to me, she said, I was preparing to come and tell you you can't do that. Because you're my son and I don't want trouble for you. But guess what happened? While she was getting ready, somebody sent her a video. You know that I talked about the head of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, one of the largest denominations. I didn't mention his name because it was not yet his turn. But then I mentioned the name of the organization because I've just about had enough of them and so he's God. God's had enough of that foolishness. And so... My mom said she was about to come and some, to call me and somebody sent her a, a message, a video link. And she was like, okay, let's watch this one. And the video link was exposing in detail the things that I had just said. And she was like, so what do we do? I said, we continue to speak the truth. <laughs> That's what we do. That is exactly what we do. The devil is very calculated in his approach because he will use people that you will be too afraid to speak against. But Jesus says they will come in my name. You know how people say, well, I can't say anything about that man of God. Because the Bible says, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. I am only going to admit that you're anointed if I see the fruit of the anointing. Jesus says, many will come in my name in the last days. He says, but by their fruits, you shall know them. If the fruits that you bear is the fruit of unholy association with unbelievers, then I know you are one of them. For the companion of fools, the Bible says, shall be destroyed. The Bible says, come out from among them and be you separate. But rather than come out from among them, you are fighting and doing everything possible to get with them. When we started communion house, when we're about to start communion house, I was chatting with somebody that I had thought was a man of God. Because by then I was not yet a fruit inspector. (laughs) Not like I am now. I'm a fruit inspector now. When you're talking to me, no matter how well you sound, I'm listening and the civilized part of me is smiling like, wow, that is awesome. But I am looking out for the fruits. Can I see the fruit? If I don't see the fruit, forget it. You, you've just wasted time. But then I was not as much a fruit inspector. I was still a show watcher. I was watching the show that he was putting up, the big screen at his church. The number of people who attend his service and the number of people who go to his so-called Bible school. And so when he told me that he was going to be in America, I was so excited. I felt so privileged that this man of God will notify me <laughs> that he is coming to town. So I told my wife, I am going to go and meet up with him. And my wife was like, eh. I said, no, 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 no. None of that. No, no, I am going. And so she said, okay, you go. And when I got there, I shared with him the vision of communion house and all of that good stuff. And you know what question he asked me? I had just poured out my heart to share about what things are coming and how we need to cre- how we need to go back to have a meeting from house to house. How we need to go back to the experience of the early church because we are in the last days. And you know what question he asked me while he was swallowing the last bit of his omelet? He said to me, 
Yeah. No, no, because I was so determined not to miss my appointment with him that I got to his hotel before he had breakfast. And you know me, I've never been the earliest person. No, but that day I was beyond early. When the man saw me at the lobby, he was like, wow. I said, yes, sir. (laughs) I'm here. I was smiling like an idiot. I was there. And I was watching him eat his breakfast. And you know, when he was about to swallow the last bit of it, he was like, I visited quite a number of pastor friends of mine in America, and they make more money than they get from tithes and offerings. Do you know how they do it? And I was thinking to myself, of all the holy revelation from the book of Acts and Hebrews that I just shared, your concern is not souls, it's not the heart of the Father, it's not the end times, it's not the return of the Savior. Your concern is how they make money. I was like, okay, I'm going to play nice. So I said, well, some people sell books. And was like, seriously? Tell me what people don't know. I said, okay. I said, well, some that I've been close to, they sell advertisements. So on Sunday, when you're watching the announcements or what some people call church news, I said, the background music can actually be paid for by State Farm. I said, so there are pastors who make a lot of money by so doing. So when you come to church, some of the background music are music from advertisements on television, and they pay, play them very subtly. And so that's why you find that you go to some churches and almost everybody uses the same insurance company. You go to the parking lot and everyone is driving a Toyota and you don't even know that that is what is really going on. So I told him that and I'm like, I'm going to play. I said, I thought to myself, he was trying to test to see how aware I was of the environment that God had seated me in. So I told him some of those things that people were doing to make money. And I was like, okay, okay. He said, but is that all that you know? I said, well, that's mostly it. And it was like, well, he said that was a test. So I said, how did that do? He said, I'll tell you later. And then he kept talking about other money, money, money stuff. You see what I mean? But the reason why I remember that now as we were speaking was this. If I had looked at his fruits or the lack thereof, I would not have gotten on that plane. Because the fruits that he bears are the fruits of pride, the pride of life. I need to outdress that other pastor. When is my Gucci month? Everything got to be Gucci. He's born fruits of nothing more than of an ungodly focus on outward appearance and undue attention to mammon. If I had known how to be a fruit inspector, perhaps I would have sided with my wife's discernment who said, sit your butt at home. Oh yeah, because my wife said if I left, I would pay her that money because she thinks it's already a wasted money. (laughs) But let me tell you something. I'm not even as concerned about the money that I didn't save as the face that I wish I could have saved. Because he took we took a picture together and he shared it to his hundreds of thousands of following. And that made my day. I was calling everybody. Have you been on Instagram today? (laughs) Yeah, because the man featured me on his page. I just felt like I had arrived. In fact, I felt like I was happier than the day that I got born again. That was how terrible it was. Because let me tell you something, if we are not careful, worldliness, none of us is is immune to worldliness. As long as we are in the flesh, none of us, every single one of us, the temptation just has to be right. You'll be gone. You understand what I mean? So what I'm saying is not just a focus on what people are doing individually I am saying that we need to wake up to see what the devil is doing collectively to the body of Christ the spate of worldliness is what has kept many people drunk and asleep Jesus said in the book of Luke he says do not be drunk with the wine of carousement to be caroused means to be made to feel good excessively and that's what the world does the world carouses us you know, they say things in the news and like, oh my God, that is so awesome. And if they ask you, what does it mean? You don't know. If they say that, oh, interest rates, once again, have been kept at an all-time low. And you're like, whoa, And you're like, what does it mean? What is the real thing that they want to get out of it? Because they don't spend all that money paying those movie stars, I mean, sorry, those newscasters. They don't spend all that money dressing them the way they do, beaming out free news to you in HD, just so that you can feel good. That's not how the world works. If anyone is saying it on the media, someone is paying for it. And ultimately, whoever is paying for it is hoping that eventually you will pay for it. And so whatever is being said, ask yourself, why is it being said? 
Let's finish watching this video. <laughs> You okay? You need a minute? Cool. Okay. <clears throat> Listen up, people. I know a thing or two about extinction. And let me tell you, and you'd kind of think this would be obvious, going extinct is a bad thing. And driving yourselves extinct? In 70 million years, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. At least we had an asteroid. What's your excuse? You're headed for a climate disaster, and yet every year governments spend hundreds of billions of public funds on fossil fuel subsidies. Okay, let's pause it now. Imagine if we had spent hundreds of billions per year. What I wanted us to hear is that that is the image of the beast and it's been given a voice to speak and is speaking as a man. Did, did the Bible not warn us concerning these things? I mean, look at this video. I mean, everything about this video is fine. This video is a Bible school on its own. If you know how to watch properly. The, the real map of the world, which is behind them, can you play it again? Just so that we can see. I just you're subsidizing see giant the meteors. That's what you're doing right now. Well, let's see. Think maybe. of all the other things you could do with you that. have to money. back up, but let's see. Around the world, okay, people are living in poverty. There it is. Don't you think helping them would make oh, more sense move. than, oh. I don't know, paying for the going, demise going, of your entire species? Let me be oh, real for move. a second. Okay, well, sorry about that. You've got a huge see. opportunity right now. As you rebuild your economies and bounce back from this pandemic, this is humanity's big Okay, just pause. That would do. Yeah, that would do. If we can see, is there a way to clear this thing so we can just see the uh, thing itself? Okay, there you go. You see what the real map of the world is? The reason why they surround that thing with the, with the, um, no, that's not olive. That is, that is actually wheat. That's the head of, of wheat. Is because according to the Bible, it's only the earth that produces bread. Job chapter, th Job, um, I believe it's 28. Job says that men will depart in shafts to places unknown, swinging to and fro, the same places forgotten by the feet. He said, but as for the earth, from it comes bread. And I've explained to you before that what it means to depart in shafts is when they launch a rocket. The rocket breaks away in a shaft when it gets mid-air and all it goes, as far as it goes, it goes as far as the orbit. And the orbit is the place that goes to and fro, forgotten by the feet. Okay, but as for the earth, from it comes bread. And so the symbol of bread is around the earth. And almost every time they've used this logo in the last hundred years, almost... They've always represented that logo as blue or green, which stands for life and vegetation. But for the first time, I am seeing it here represented in brown. And brown is a desert. It represents famine. It represents impoverished, in, 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 what, what's the word? Uh, deprivation. And so, uh, devastation. They're throwing all of these things out. And the signs of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, the changes in weather, the natural disasters that will happen are being attributed to climate change so that you will not know that this is the fulfillment of the word of God, that this is just some kind of natural phenomenon. It is all for the dulling of the heart. The church is the most precious thing ever to have been, and that is what all of these games are about. The devil don't want nobody's money because he can make his own. He's after the souls of men. So all of these things, and the reason why I am screaming and shouting here is because I've worked for these organizations for so many years. And I know of their pandering, and the Lord allowed me to have been in those circles so that I can see the dedication of their service is to mammon, is to Baal, is to Satan, and not to God. So that we can begin to open our eyes. The Bible says be sober and be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, is going around like a roaring lion. Seeking whom that he might devour. The signs are here, ladies and gentlemen. The beast, the image of the beast has been given a voice. And here we are. We think that Jesus will wait another 10 years to come. Please don't bank on it. I want every one of us. I believe what God would have us do is live every day now going forward as though it can be the last. Spend as much time with God as you can 
Spend as much time studying as you can because I told you studying the Bible is not just for now, it's for later because in the new world, when the millennial reign begins, you don't want to be sent first of all to nursery school or elementary school because God is not going to open everybody's, anybody's brain and put his knowledge in there. God says, I don't do that. He says, if anyone is going to receive knowledge and understanding, if you're going to receive wisdom, understanding and the knowledge of the Holy One, you have to be one who has been weaned from the breast. You have to start as an infant and you have to take one line upon a line and one precept upon a precept. So forget about all that doctrine that we were taught in children's church that when we get to heaven and the moment we see Jesus, we're just going to know all things. You're going to know who stole your pencil in fifth grade. You're going to know. Let me tell you something. You will not know all things magically. Everything is already inside of you that you need to know, but it has to be unveiled, and it can only be unveiled like you're peeling onions, one layer after another. The Bible says eternity is written by the hand of God into the hearts of men. So everything is already in your heart, but you're only going to know it little by little. So why don't you do yourself a favor and get a head start right now by getting to know God more? You understand what I mean? So those are the things that we need to do now. We need to start to prepare ourselves. We need to be sober and be vigilant. And whoever God puts on your mind, pray for them before you call them. Because you just never know. You might be that agent of heaven that God is sending to go and wake that person up. To go and bring in that soul of Tassos. You might be that Ananias. Pray before you go. Pray before you call them so that they don't reel you in. But let me tell you something, I encourage you guys to go and watch the rest of this video because if we should stay here, we'll be here all night. Simply because every scene that you see, everything that is shown is strategically positioned to communicate the agenda of the Antichrist. Anybody who says that the things that we see are not by God is not of God. Let me say that again. If anybody is telling you that the things that you see today this, the division that is going on in America, Democrats, Republican. If you see the persecution of, the, of true believers by being, by being shut down on social media, by being censored, by being put in social media jail like Ann, let me tell you something. Those things are not happening by coincidence. They are happening by the hand of God. So if anybody tells you that, oh, no, no, it's just, I mean, I mean, these things happen. You can't just keep letting anybody say whatever they want. Why not? We should say whatever we believe. The Bible says, I believe, therefore I speak. Let us, let us wrap up here. Genesis chapter 47. Huh? Oh yeah, yeah, you're getting ready for communion. Yes, well done, thank you. Genesis 47, verse 12. What does it say? It says... Then Joseph provided his father, his brothers, and all his father's household with bread according to the number of their families. God is raising people amongst us that will be able to provide for our brothers and sisters when they wake up and when they come back home. When they show up at camp, God is raising us to have bread for them. And the reason why God is going the extra mile by sending by the hand of his angel to bring you out of Sodom is because he wants you to be ready to receive those who will make that last flight. Imagine if every one of us come out of the system at the same time. Who's going to tell who what to do? God allowed for Moses to be in the wilderness for 40 years because he needed somebody who can receive others into the wilderness without feeling lost and without guessing his way through. So will you be one of those people? Will you be a Joseph? Will you be one who will say, you know what? I know that some of my brothers and sisters who are still following some celebrity culture, who still believe so very hopelessly in their political party, and they would rather say what the party is saying than what God is saying. When they wake up and they give me that call, when they wake up, and they ask for direction. I will not be guessing. I would already know what to tell them. I will already have bread to give them. Remember. Um, men. You remember that scripture. From our prayer meeting. Wherein the Bible says that we should long. Like I believe it was Paul who was saying. He says let us long to be those. Who impart others with spiritual gifts. Let us long. Let us be those ones. 
He said, because when you learn to be the one to give bread, guess what? You will have bread. If you are the one that is longing to give people insight and revelation, you will have insight and revelation. But if you don't see yourself as a Joseph that will help to secure your brothers and sisters and empower them to also fulfill destiny, guess what? How is God going to trust you with resources? And God is raising up people here for the preservation of life in the days to come. Let me tell you something. Some people will not wake up until the last minute. Some people would actually be already in line to receive the mark of the beast when finally the conviction of the Holy Spirit will ring in their hearts. And they will say, what am I doing here? What happened to me? People would wake up and suddenly look at themselves and say, how did I even allow myself to believe these things? To follow these people. Do you know how many people after Sunday who woke up and repented from having gone to some of these worship services? When we were saying it two months ago, that I don't believe that. I mean, I, I didn't even say I don't believe. I said that worship service. I, I said those people, they're gifted. They're supposed to be musicians in the house of God. But they have allowed the spirit of idolatry yes. and, this, and this unholy celebrity culture to draw them after the idols. Because you don't need that guy to lead worship. You were doing just fine on your own. In case you guys watch this video sometime, Maverick Music, you guys were doing just fine. You don't need Justin Bieber. You don't need somebody who's poor. Somebody who isn't bearing the fruits of repentance. Talk is cheap. They were talking about being born again, but where are the fruits? But then you gave up all of the altar that God has given to you just because you were celebrity struck. So I said that today for the rest of you who are looking to honor that invitation from the ungodly ones. You don't need them. You have Jesus. My dear pastor friend, if you, have, if you are too busy to prepare a message to preach, tell the congregation, I'm so sorry, I didn't prepare any message, but thank God he's prepared. Brother Ramsey, he can come and preach. Get, let someone come from among you. You don't have to go and pay lots of money to bring some celebrity to fill in the gap. Because those guys aren't bearing the fruits that are worthy of the name of God. But you bring them to the altar because you want a following. You want to increase the number of people watching your services. So you hire a celebrity. God says you are the light. If you need to shine something else on your gospel, it is darkness. You understand what I mean? I don't have to, I don't have to bring... So that pastor that I told you that I went to meet up with in Houston, who was asking me all those questions about money, when I was leaving, you know one of the advices that he gave to me, the counsel that he gave to me when I was leaving? He says, I know you, you like to keep to yourself. He said, but that's not how it works. He said, once you get home, start liking people's pages. He said, all of these pastors that are doing well, he says, when you look at them and they have about 100,000 and above, you know, they have a good following. He says, like their posts, like, start commenting on everything. He said, at some point they will notice you. He says, make sure you comment and like, comment and like, and you follow them. And I said, oh, okay. How does, how does that help me? He says, yeah, he said, because you want to be noticed. He said, because those are the guys who can give you a platform. It's not Jesus. It's not Jesus oh, yeah. No, those guys can give you a platform. But look at the people that God given the platform recently. Where are they now? Ashamed. Because it's very apparent now that they have been drinking from the cup of the Luciferians. And some of them are too ashamed to even admit it. So they will try to cover it up. They would try to, in fact, I saw briefly yesterday, some people were trying to defend what happened with that unholy trinity of Justin, of Kanye, and of the other Luciferian. Some people, say that again? Oh yeah, something Manson. People were trying to defend what happened. And some people were like, oh no, 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 we're Christians, you know, we should love everybody. I'm like, oh, the Bible according to who? The gospel according to who? The Bible says, do not love the world, nor the things that are in the world, because friendship with the world is enmity against God. Why, when did it become so important to be so famous? When Jesus was around, he didn't want to be famous. When he walked a miracle, he would say to the person, just go home. Because the moment you tell everybody, everyone's going to be here. And they wouldn't listen. And they told on Jesus, and one day 4,000 people showed up. And Jesus was like, and now we have to feed them. And then after feeding them, 
they wanted to follow him everywhere. The Bible says, and Jesus knew in their hearts that the men spoke amongst one another that they would make him king. They wanted to destroy his destiny. They wanted to make him king on the earth, whereas he's the king of kings. Do you know how many people whose destinies got destroyed because the wrong people came around them to make them king? Oh yeah, there are pastors and bishops today who are wearing long garments and pastoring a church of thousands of people who ideally God has sent to the missionaries to India wherein they would actually do the work of their father. But now they have been made king and so they're at home watching TV and drinking wine. Let us be like the ones who said I would rather suffer affliction with the children of with, with God's children than to eat the fat of the king's table. Anyway, you know these things are so real. Wherein I'm excited. On Sunday we read from the book of Revelations, wherein the Bible says Satan knows that his time is short, and that is the reason why he's cranking everything up. And God is the one controlling time is the one who says in those days the bible says in those in those days the lord will shorten the time for the sake of the elect and so everything that was prophesied is still going to be fulfilled it's just happening more quickly and so god is bringing you out more quickly he's equipping you quickly and so what does that mean you need to engage him you can't miss a thing let us break bread together let us rise And while we're waiting for everybody to be upstanding, I'm just going to seize that 30 seconds to, to slot in another scripture here from <laughs> Romans chapter 12, verse 13. The Bible says, you know, we just read, what did we just read? We just read Genesis chapter 47, verse 12. Romans chapter 12, verse 13 is very much like it. He says, distributing to the needs of the saints, giving to hospitality. Okay. Joseph was raised up to do what? To give bread to his brothers. Right? Romans chapter 12 verse 13 says we should be given the hospitality. We need to be accommodating. We need to be ready to receive those who are coming because many of them are coming tired and exhausted because they have spent more time in the world than they should. Okay? And they will be thirsty. Anyone who comes out of Egypt is thirsty all the time. Right? So let us be ready to feed others. Now, the secret to what I just told you is in the verse before it, because we still have time. Let me just read that one too. The Bible says in verse 12, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer. This is how you're going to have what to give. Because Joseph survived the prison because he was what? Rejoicing in hope. Now, one day, his brothers will come and bow. And he endured persecution. When Potiphar's wife persecuted him, many of us would have said, you know what? Yeah, just one time, okay? You know? But he, re he, re he rejected the advances. You understand what I mean? He fled. And guess what? He remained steadfast. He prayed steadfastly. Even after God had given him the interpretation, he still prayed. He said to the guy, he said, tell them that, tell Pharaoh that God will give him an answer of peace. But he already knew but he still prayed. So ladies and gentlemen, we need to do these three things so that we can be ready to receive others. I tell you, before Jesus comes, the time will come wherein church will be at your house. So what will you feed them? Remember seven months ago, I announced to us that the name of this revival, God showed me this dispensation, the, La the church of Laodicea, the seventh church. God showed me the revival of this last generation and the revival was called the revival of Obed-Edom. How many, how many people remember that name? Obed-Edom was the guy after the, 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 the Ark of the Covenant could not find a resting place yes. Yes. and David was looking for where they're going to put the Ark of the Covenant. A man by the name of Obed-Edom opened up his house and the Lord found a, a resting place in the house of Obed-Edom. And the Bible says, and the Lord blessed him very greatly. Obed-Edom means the one that serves the other man. The one that is hospitable. You see what I mean? That is what Obed-Edom means. The servant of the other man. And so let me say this, folks. In fact, the, the meaning is even deeper than that. Because when the Lord showed it to me, 
one of the things that I saw later was the word Edom means red because it's the same word Adam because when God made man he called him Adam because he made him out of the red clay so it was probably somewhere in South Georgia he was he was red clay he was a red man and that was why he was called Adam now but he made he was made in the image and in the likeness of God when um, Ezekiel saw the feet of God what was it he was red because it was like burnished bronze when John the beloved saw the feet of God of the Lord Jesus Christ he said it was like burnished uh, what bronze he was also red that is the reason why when you watch these new movies when they want to portray God they portray him as a red being or a purple being have you seen the trailer to the eternals they were talking about the one who gave them the instruction not to defile the children of men they said it was the red one so they're talking about the God of Adam the one who made heaven and earth anyway that's story for another day and the Lord said to me Obed Edom is the one that helps Edom because when your brothers and sisters come running they will come bloodied they will come beaten by the world because when Jesus was on the cross he was not white he was not brown he was not yellow Jesus was red on the cross because the crown of thorns they put on his head was for that purpose so that he bled evenly all around him such that when the Lord looked at him God saw the second and the final Adam Heaven was looking at a red man on the cross and so when your brothers and sisters come they are coming to the house of Obed Edom because that Obed that servant is there to serve you you need to be that one that is ready to serve them to give them comfort to enlighten them to share revelations with them so church is coming to your house as it did the house of obed edom are you going to study and prepare yourself are you going to be prayed up it's every inch of your of your house do you know that quite often when people come to this basement even when we're not having meetings people always like man there's something about this basement let me tell you something prayer is always going up in this house of the glory of god what will be said of your own preparation how will you ready yourself like Joseph so two things that I want you to take out of this meeting today apart from the fact that we need to open our eyes and not let any other clue pass you by when next you see that trend on social media when next you see that thing in the news don't let anything pass you by like this dragon that spoke don't let it pass you by but if you don't know what you're looking for you will miss it so that means you need to spend more time studying prophecy and studying the word of God and then to keep your eyes open and keep your heart open too you see what I mean now apart from that two things that I want you to take from here today is that God is bringing you help grabbing you by the hand to take you out of the system so the things that have held you back the taste that you've had for the garlic of Egypt the Lord is purging you of that so that you no longer desire those things of the world he's doing that he's bringing you out so that what so that you can be outside and, and when all your brothers and sisters come, you're like, what time did you wake up? I've been awake since last year. You're just getting up. woke. Okay, it's okay. It's all right. No, it's not so that you can brag and take credit. It is so that you can be prepared to feed them and to be hospitable. Now, let me say this again. The reason why I'm saying this is because many of us will be bombarded with questions. When they come, they will be like children. They'll be asking you a lot of questions. Since when have you known that the earth is not that spinning ball? Since when have you known that these people are the same people? This politician and that politician, they've been eating together. They're all messengers of Satan. Since when have you known that this TV evangelist is actually one of those inseminated people in the body of Christ to confuse? They will ask you all those questions because they are just waking up. And if you are not patient, like the Bible says, patiently being hospitable, you might want to run out of your house and say, God, am I the only prophet left in Israel? So let us exercise patience. Okay? Let us begin to bear the fruits of the Spirit because we are going to need it. Why did you get a head start? Everybody here at Communion House, every single body, Angelica, you can bear me witness. Right? Everybody here, you know that God brought you here by His own hand. We don't have a billboard. We don't advertise. We don't have... We are, uh, the address for this place is not listed anywhere. You understand what I mean? God brought you here. And if God brought you here, then you know that he has an assignment for you. So please let us begin to take it very seriously, what God is doing with us who are here. Alrighty. So let us raise the bread. My bread is really broken actually, so I'm breaking bread. Father, we thank you. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I want to say this. I want to tell you this. As soon as I close my eyes, 
I saw the Lord waiting for you at home. And I'm so excited because one of the most significant changes in my life and in my walk with God happened at that, se- at that time. There was a season of my life wherein when I was hanging out with my friends, I always felt like somebody was waiting for me at home. The first time it happened, I got home, there was nobody. And I'm like, it's not even possible because my door is always locked. How is anyone going to wait for me at home? But I always felt like someone was waiting for me at home until after like the third or fourth time that it happened, it just hit me that, oh, this must be the Lord waiting for me. And I'm seeing that today concerning your, some of us standing here today, you will have an encounter with God the moment you get home. A question that you've been asking, the answer will drop in your spirit. Some of you will suddenly remember something or somebody it is not because your brain suddenly woke up because of that coffee and long drive home it is because the lord is bringing to your remembrance so i want to say to you be full of expectation because the lord awaits you at home to bring you into that sweet fellowship and so lord we thank you thank you jesus because we do this in remembrance of you the very essence of your sacrifice we call to remembrance that it was your deprivation to give us the greatest privilege of all which is the glorified life Thank you, Jesus, for your body that was broken, for your blood that was shed. You may eat and you may drink in remembrance of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, um, Pastor Will is going to come and give us some final announcements and we're going to take up the offering. But because it takes two minutes to collect all this trash, I'm going to quickly read some more scripture. Yeah. <laughs> you see, I'm, I'm, the Bible says buying up the time for the days are evil. So I'm kind of like buying up every opportunity here. John chapter 17, reading from verse 7. Yeah. Jesus says, Now that they have known that all things which you have, now that, now, now listen, now they have known that all things which you have given me are from you. For I have given to them the words which you have given me. And they have received them and have known surely that I came forth from you and they have believed that you sent me. Before people believe that God sent you, that you are the Obed-Edom, you have to first of all believe it yourself. Can I say that again? You have to believe that God brought you here for a purpose. That God is opening your heart for a purpose. That God is enlightening you for a purpose. And how do you demonstrate that you know? By beginning to act like somebody who knows. You need to become circumspect in all your ways. Which means to be fully alert and let nothing pass you by. Begin to look at the resources that God has given to you. The skills you know, the places that you have been, the experiences that you have had. The other day, I don't think I told you, but it was Bryson that I was talking about. I sent somebody for him to mentor. And when I told him what that person was going through, he became emotional on the phone and he said to me, he said, I sought the Lord concerning these experiences. Because when they happened to me, I was like, why me? And the Lord said to me, so that you can know how to help others through it. Now, that is what we're supposed to be doing now if we truly believe that the time has come. Let us begin to leverage everything that God has given to us. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's celebrate this man of God. Come on. This has been house to house. And it's incredible what we are able to partake in just coming here. Um, I'm going to transition to a time of tithes and offerings. I'm going to put the basket here rather rather than this TV remote and rather than my phone. And I'm going to ask for a volunteer. Oh, Caught it. There you go. Um, Nearly. Would anybody like to take Bryson? Would you do me a massive favor? Would you run around with those? If anybody needs one, just give Bryson a high five or a wave. Um, But you can see what type of house we are what type of DNA we have, and what we're looking to progress and walk forward in. If you want to see more of the same, it's your tithes and offerings that help us make all of this possible. All of it. All of it. Even all the stuff that you see online, on social media, on podcasts, etc. We can advance 
by your investment. And we want to thank you and celebrate what you've already invested in this place. You know, you can look at all these cryptocurrencies, everything like that. You can put your dollar any other way in any other place. But I can tell you what you're investing in right now is not just a building, it's people. And there's not many things and many charities, let me tell you that all the money goes straight back in to the people. Many charities that we know of and celebrate and go, oh, they are doing great things. I believe it's only about 1% of your offering that actually goes to what you're thinking. So if that be a name, a cancer charity, one of them is Cancer Research, for example, 1% of your donation actually goes to helping that fight that disease. The rest goes for administration, wages, etc. But that's not what Communion House is. All of it, I can guarantee, and I am a partaker of it. This is not a South Georgian accent, this is a Scottish accent. I am here because of your giving as well, and we're advancing the gospel for this. Oh, yes. So, Pastor so, Will, let me just quickly say yeah. this. I, I was sitting here on Sunday, right? So now the Lord is telling, letting me know that, look, we go through all of these things just to encourage giving, but it is not the substance, it is the heart. You see what I mean? Obedience is all of what matters. The Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. And sometimes it is not what is being sacrificed upon the altar, it is the obedience. You know, we're a different breed of people here. So we can't do things like the world's always done it or like the, like the way we've always done it. Let's understand that this is worship. We're presenting our obedience before God. I sat here on Sunday and there's money that's been owed to me, insurance money that's been owed to me. And for some reason, no one is talking to me, no one is calling me, no one is texting me and no one is paying me. And I was just like, well, whatever, it's gonna come when it comes. I sat here and the Lord said to me, I want you to tithe in advance of that money. And I'm like, okay, I haven't even gotten the money. I'm not even sure when I'm going to get it. But the Lord says tithe in advance. And, and they called me and they were literally begging me to take the money quickly. They were like, if you gave us your account number, we can deposit it now as opposed to sending you a check. And I'm like, I've never heard that before. No one's been that in a hurry to give me money. At least not like that. You see what I mean? And so I just want to encourage you. It is the obedience. So... This is not to impress anybody or to save anybody from going into, um, into, into foreclosure. This is essentially a way of demonstrating your obedience. So when you do it, then you get the fullness of it. All right? So God bless you. I just thought I'd add that and we can close. I think that's amazing. Yeah. That, and yeah, 2 Corinthians 9 verse 7, Each one must give, give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver. So if you, want to, if you want to give, here's the ways you can give. Checks can be made payable to Communion House, PO Box 384, Swanee GA USA 30024. Text give to 678-929-2267. Online is communion.house forward slash give. You can give via the Church Centre app. Cash app is dollar sign Communion House. Sell is 404-369-9560. And PayPal is at communion.house. And you've got the envelopes. Have you got the envelopes? If you've given on your phone, would you raise it with me as we bless this offering? Or if you've given via another way, hand on heart, whatever you feel comfortable doing, um, let's pray over these offerings. Thank you, Sister Gina, as well. Lord, we thank you for every good gift that has been sown into this house, Lord Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, that it's just a return of what you have already given us in good stead. So Lord, we just give all the praise and all the worship to you that yes. you have put us in a place of plenty. There's many who are in want, but you have put us in a place of plenty that we might replenish and build others. So Lord, we give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' holy name. As per a couple of announcements, there's just one that I really want to draw your attention to. I will put the building fund up to close, but please, this is our early Thanksgiving fellowship lunch. Come on, come on. Oh, thank you, Washburn. Thank you. Let's celebrate this. This is going to be at Donnie's Country Cooking. That's 1485 Beaver Ruin Road, Norcross, GA 30093. Now, we would like to help Donnie's out. If you plan on attending or coming along, please would you let us know. There's two ways you can sign up, but I'm going to set this challenge. If you do want to come and you've set in your heart tonight that you do want to come, there's a notice board which you can sign up on. Please do not leave without giving me your details and how much numbers are coming. This is all free, by the way, and it's a great time of fellowship to celebrate an early Thanksgiving all together. So who, signs, who thinks that sounds like a good idea? Come on. And who's going to sign up tonight? There you go. There you go. So please, please, I made you raise your hand. You're, you can't lie in the house of God. So there you go. You need to do it. 
Um, last of the announcements will be spinning behind me as we finish. But please join us on Sunday, 10 a.m., 10 a.m. on Sunday. And we are thankful for who you guys are being here in this place. Let's stand to conclude, please. Let's stand to conclude. And let us just pray to conclude as well. Father, we are careful to give you all the praise and all the glory. And I ask, Lord, we ask, Lord, let your will be done that is already in heaven, but let it be done also in earth, on earth, Lord Jesus. Let it be on earth, Lord every part of your plan. Lord, and let your Holy Spirit change every heart, mend every healing and heart, Lord Jesus, and just ignite people in a new way as they walk out of here. Carry it with you. I hear that. Carry it with you in the bucket load and go and change your world. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Amen. Have a great night all. Lord bless you all.